So why would you want to use mesh shading? What are the, the main advantages? Because that's really where, you know, why would you bother doing all this extra work? Uh, the first one is, I know we've had discussions for years and years and years where people were calculating number of triangles per clock into geometry pipelines and complaining and saying, I could write better shaders. Your fixed function pipelines are too slow. Well, it's true. Uh, every time you have a piece of fixed function silicon, there is a maximum amount of bandwidth, which means it eventually, invariably, turns into a bottleneck because you try to push more triangles than you can through that, that pipeline. It doesn't scale, is, is basically bottom line. So the idea is to say, well, instead of having fixed function, let's make this entirely programmable, which means it will scale to all the cores you've got on the GPU. So a new Turing GPU with its 4,000 whatever amount of cores means you get a lot more processing power and you can spend it on processing geometry if that's what you need to do. And you don't have this bottleneck in the middle of your vertex shader and your pixel shader telling you, no, this is the fixed rate of triangles that I can output and you know, this is your upper limit. Now basically it's down to how clever can your code be to really pay what you actually see. The other advantage is, like I said, uh, we can try to pre-bake a lot of information about the topology to optimize vertex reuse, trying to maximize connectivity, reduce attribute fetches. So there's all kinds of strategies that you can start implementing for this, which hopefully will give you a lot, a lot more boost. So in other words, the flexibility that you gain in expressing your geometry algorithms should more than pay off for not having dedicated silicon. If you can code to the problem, we're sort of hoping that you're gonna be essentially optimizing and picking up the pounds of performance on the floor instead of picking up the pennies and counting clock cycles, right? If you can immediately throw away trivially millions of triangles because you know they're not having an impact on your screen, do that instead of just trying one triangle at a time to figure out if that triangle is gonna get called behind a Z buffer, being called by a frostum or whatever, right? Uh, finally, uh, or not finally, rather, uh, the other advantage is, like I said, because we reduce these meshes into byte size, the meshlets, everything fits in pipe. So you can stay at the lowest level of cache. All the usual costs of fetching stuff from really far into the main GPU memory, or even worse, from the main PC memory, that hopefully never happens. You can work entirely in pipe. You never have to basically pay for the cost of memory accesses if you can somehow stream your geometry through. And finally, uh, we've also heard a lot of talk about moving to a more compute-like format, right? And we all want our rasterizer to be generally programmable. We don't like, you know, black box stuff in the middle that blocks our development. So providing, you know, an environment that is more general computing, that is less sort of oriented specifically towards drawing triangles, we hope that this gives us more flexibility, again, that, you know, we can express better uh, our performance and, and gain out of that. In terms of application, uh, the obvious first suspects, uh, I mean, originally we looked at CAD models, right? You know, your, your, your average vehicle that's modeled uh, down to the nuts and bolts by, you know, the, the, manuf the car manufacturers, for instance, they want to see this. This involves a humongous amount of culling, right? Because usually when you see it, you look at the car from the outside, you don't see the engine parts unless you, you cut into it, right? So you may have, hundreds of millions of triangles in one of these CAD meshes, you somehow need to draw them on screen at interactive rates. This is what originally motivating, motivated this. But obviously, and of course, once you have something this flexible, you start looking at, well, how can I do level of detail more cleverly? How can I do procedural instances, for instance? You know, um, we're talking hair, we're talking vegetation, we're talking oceans, terrain, all these things that have very specific, so if niche applications are usually geometry intensive, we think there is a good tra uh, translation and transition to this new paradigm. Finally, the other one is, or the last one, which is a bit probably more niche, uh, isosurfaces, so all the sort of medical data, volumetric data, voxels, uh, SDF, signed distance fields. Uh, usually rasterizing them has involved fairly complicated algorithms like marching cubes, which are usually reasonably hard to implement in compute because again, you got a lot of bandwidth, you know, a lot of scattered gathers in your compute shaders. All that stuff is kind of difficult. If we can move all this and stream it in pipe with programmable shading, hopefully we can make much better implementations there. So as you can see there, there's probably a, a very wide level of applications here, a very wide variety of things we can do with mesh shading. Uh, and we really need to start experimenting with this stuff.